Hello everybody and welcome back to an independent courier. In the last episode, we broke free from our great Ching overlords. And as you can see by hovering over the budget panel, while it may have been a little bit shaky, what we've done is we've removed that massive penalty that we were paying. And so our books are in the green. We're an independent courier. And now we get to forge our own path. And I asked for your feedback last time. Thank you so much. I read through all of the comments and we had a few pretty good suggestions. We could move up this way into Manchuria. Of course, we'd have to wait for our peace treaty with the Great Qing to go away so that we could declare war on them again. They wouldn't be necessarily an easy target either with over 1,000 battalions. Other options, we could look down this way with a little bit of a navy behind us, either to fight people or maybe to try and colonize some room down here, Micronesia, for example. There are a few states, small island states that we could look to nab. And then, of course, we have, you know, the, the rest of the world. We've got a lot to unpack. We also have a landed party who are <laughs> pretty frustrated. Uh, thankfully, the revolution is capped at 75. So, so long as we can not piss them off too much more and try and keep their overall standing within our society somewhat low, we should be okay. Okay, we're trying to get rid of this crappy traditionalist economy and it's a little bit slow. Our legitimacy isn't great. Our politics is completely torn in this country. Uh, we, we do also potentially need to bring the conservatives into power for a little bit if we wanted to be able to push through, say, colonial affairs, which we'd really need the armed forces, rural folk, etc., to try and push that through. That's going to be a little difficult. We'll cross that bridge when we get there, though. For the time being, I think we keep pushing through with our existing reforms. Let's improve relations with Russia. We have so much influence, as per usual. Uh, even with improved relations, damaged relations, we've still got just far too much. Uh, the Japanese, we might just wait on for a little bit longer. And then the only other thing that I noticed that really should be addressed is that we have some extra authority. Uh, we may as well start making a bit of money off of it. Let's enact a lick of tax. Why not? If we can use that money to either fix some inevitable inefficiencies in the market, bit of a yikes, uh, including some very basic ones like clothes. Sulfur, we'd need to expand if we want to try and get some more or alternatively, uh, <laughs> actually, no, it is quite far though. I was gonna say alternatively we could build some, but that's not an option, sadly. We'd need to either militarily reach out or continue to trade as we've been doing. For the time being, with all of this bureaucracy in my back pocket, we will try and trade just to fix a couple of these deficiencies. Okay, agrarianism is ticking up slowly. If this goes through, granted it's only a 17% chance, but if this goes through, we may consider flipping the politics of our nation for just a little bit to try and push through some alternative laws that at the moment we're having a real difficulty to push through. Why? Because we have almost no power. In fact, in the next update of the game, this government would basically not function, right? Because at 25% legitimacy, you can't even pass laws. So these guys are just barely trying to get through. It hasn't worked. The next checkpoint's now going to take two years. I think it's time to start with some radical change, okay? First and foremost, for the first time in basically this entire playthrough, we are going to reform the government. And by the will of the people, we're going to try and put these guys in. At the moment, we have <laughs> an act of revolution that is, of course, preventing me from doing that. Uh, it's decreasing, though, at minus one a week. So this will slowly bleed down, and in about a year's time, we'll be able to reform the government. Until then, I'll have to sort of pay the penalty. Uh, let's kick out the rural folk. That will increase our legitimacy a little bit. Does it help overall? Not necessarily, no. But by increasing our legitimacy, maybe we can pass through something while we wait. 
And rather interestingly, we actually have a reasonable chance at pushing through a parliamentary republic, <laughs> which is a little bit more of a liberal uh, reform than I was expecting. But it would be really nice to remove the extra political strength the landowners are getting at the moment. So, you know what? They're already mad with us. Let's push this a little bit further with that chance. Now, our low legitimacy is hurting us a great deal. In an ideal world, the revolution would go down at the same time as this. As you can see, it is not. In fact, it is surging upwards. So, you know what? Let's pull the emergency exit on that. Rest on our laurels. If anything, what we could do actually is cater to their demands just a little bit and lean back in towards legal guardianship. This change, while not necessarily moving towards the goals of our government, would help to reduce radicalism on the other side. It's a relatively easy one for us to push through and a relatively safe one to do while the threat of revolution cools off. With a whole load of money coming in in my back pocket. Damn. That is a lot of money coming in my back pocket. Uh, I think it's time that we up our construction, something we haven't done in quite some time. I think we'll also upgrade our army because we're going to need to use them very soon. So let's get skirmish infantry. Let's get our production methods changed. Naval bases? Sure, why not? Let's expand them as well. We're going to need a little bit of a navy too. So uh, first and foremost, I'm going to go barracks. And let's get some built, let's say, I don't know, five there and three there. Eight looks pretty good. Again, in those territories, we were building up, of course, all of our construction sector. Uh, and I might actually just do the same thing again here. Let's go uh, five and five, a relatively even balance. That's, of course, going to put a lot of pressure on the supply chains that are feeding those goods. Ammunition is one that's immediately going to, unfortunately, suffer quite a penalty because we've upgraded our troops. Thankfully, the Brits will come to our aid. Uh, and sulfur. Sulfur, sulfur, sulfur. If we're going to expand militarily, it could very well be sulfur <laughs> as the primary uh, motivating factor for us. So we could... Take Kyushu. Hmm. It can support 40 sulfur mines. So instead of fighting with the Great Qing again, who we're currently peace blocked with and they massively overpower us, we could actually stop damaging relations, improve relations with them, begin damaging relations with the Japanese shogunate next door, and potentially eye up some of these territories. This could fix our woes. Uh, in a major way, actually. The other way to do it, of course, would be to grab some additional trade partners, but at the moment, ugh, it's not going to happen for us. We've got so many convoys available because we built a lot when we were under the overlordship of the Great Qing, uh, but that's not necessarily the end of the world. I'm happy to roll along with that for the time being. While the nation kind of cools and stabilizes a little bit, let's build up our military might. Small arms are another one that, uh, unfortunately, we're just not quite keeping up with demand, and that's causing the price to just go <laughs> through the roof. Not ideal. Uh, let's get some additional weapons factories down. Slowly, over time, they'll come online. While we're waiting for them to come online, let's use all of our ports and convoy trade capacity to fill up all of these gaps. If only I could fill this sulfur one, I'd be really pleased. But actually, Overall, the state of this economy at the moment is looking decent. We'll chuck a little bit of extra government administration in the queue, although you'd note we're queuing out some three years in advance now, so we might just let that gently plot away. As we begin to earn extra money, it also makes me think that actually, you know what, some of these construction sectors could do with expanding. Uh, and I can't help but feel that also a lot of our base, like tobacco or rice cotton plantations, these things too. For the time being, though, I'll add an extra level onto these two construction sectors as we really focus all of our effort on building up these territories. Ooh, and as we begin to expand our navy and other routes, our man of war production, another one. Look at this price. It's surging. Ah, the naval bases produced in shipyards. Of course, we're going to need more shipyards if we want to start building some ships. Uh, let's get an additional... 
four shipyards. They are, I think, fairly cheap to build. Uh, and for the time being, <laughs> no. Okay, for the time being, while we could lower the price with a trade route, I think we'll just sneak, uh, it's only a level one trade route, uh, sure. We'll sneak a few Russian ships out. It's nearly productive. Uh, we're filling up our reserves far too much, so I could start to either dish out some tax cuts, maybe raise some wages. Oh. Oh. And hold the phone. I started off this episode talking about how the conservatives are sweeping into power. And while we've definitely made a lot of changes so far, I didn't actually expect that election result. Okay. So what looks to have happened is the Conservative Party is fracturing away. And at the moment, it's just the PBs and the armed forces. We have the monks, the landowners and the rural folk out, and then the marginalized trade unionists. Interesting. We could actually have both of these parties in power. <laughs> or we could give the liberals a friend, a land-owning friend, for example. These ones don't necessarily always work well together, but that actually does a really good thing for our legitimacy, and it would open up a few different laws that we haven't been able to pass in a little while. So, they're happy with us. They've broken away from their Conservative Party. Sure, let's chuck them into power. A slightly different, slightly more conservative government that may or may not open up future opportunities for us, I think I don't care too much about pushing through propertied woman because now we have access to a lot of interesting stuff. Like, for example, a 13% chance of pushing through colonial exploitation. That would open up expansion out into the Pacific without having to resort to our military. However, speaking of our military, we could look to move to national militia if we just want to conscript a whole load of dudes. Or we could try and get some institutions online even if we just start with religious schools, having education, maybe some health insurance, this will do wonders for our populations. But for the time being, I'm going to try my chances at colonial exploitation. This could be big for us if we can push this through, much to the bane of the intelligentsia. We're going to unlock egalitarianism or potentially realism because we've already put quite a bit of effort into it. Extra prestige, well, uh, yeah, it's uh, fairly nice. We're going to grab this because this unlocks things like proportional taxation, universal suffrage. Some pretty good things. We'll get that slowly ticking away. More importantly, though, in the meantime, our coffers are looking great. A little wild around the edges, but great. That suggests to me that the upgrading of our construction sector was fine. In fact, we could actually keep pushing that a little harder if we want to. In the meantime though, oh, our ammunition capacity is completely out. We have no munitions plants available. This is a big holdup for us. And as I look in a little further, I notice that we don't have the percussion cap unlocked. And I can't help but feel that that might be a little bit of an oversight. Okay, here it is. 31 months to unlock that. That is going to take quite some time. Let's get that queued up. And to help it out a little bit, as we're in the process of upgrading our military, we have a little bit of extra money in, the, in our coffers. I think I'll also upgrade universities. I'll add an additional university to each place. This will give us a little bit more innovation, which will help us research just slightly faster. It'll also, of course, provide qualifications, which is fantastic, as we slowly reform and upskill our population. Chuck those bad boys to the front of the queue. They do take quite a bit longer than naval bases here that you can see are taking, like, literally, you know, one or two weeks to complete. But definitely worthwhile for us. Universities online. And actually, I might also bring an arms factory uh, near the top there as well, just so that we can prioritize a few of these things and help us move forward a little bit faster. Checking back in on colonial exploitation, and we're due for a check-in, success, highly unlikely. Uh, and interestingly, there's not really a lot of support in government. Oh my god, we did it. <laughs> okay, well, you know, it, it was highly unlikely. 
and that didn't matter. Great. Now we've unlocked colonial exploitation. This is big. Uh, interestingly and somewhat hilariously, it's our only institution. We'll probably upgrade that immediately. That will double the bonus of uh, our colonial growth. It'll take 50 weeks to get online, but I think we should just jump in, do that straight away. And now we get to cast out the colonial net, so to speak. So of course, in Victoria 3, we're looking to colonize a certain type of state, right? We can't just jump in any old wear and grab any old thing. We of course can't colonize anything that's already owned by another player. So in order to colonize, of course, we'll need to declare a strategic interest. What is quite interesting now is that I have extra capacity. We now have a maximum of two. I have one interest already declared across Indonesia. And I think our next one should probably be Oceania because then that will bring these little islands into the fold. We don't have a declared interest on Japan, so we couldn't fight them at the moment. Oceania includes the likes of Hawaii and yeah, okay, great, let's do it. So now that brings basically all of the sort of South Pacific or this half of the South Pacific within our declared interest territory. And because one of them was declared earlier, you can see that I can already actually start establishing a colony uh, it's over this territory where the French are already fighting Bali. So, I mean, it, it's not ideal, but you know what? We've unlocked it. Let's start doing it. We can start colonizing this island here, Sulawesi. And that is because if we zoom out, yeah, bam, they're a decentralized power. So we're looking at this island. We're looking at potentially Papua as well. Uh, who else do we have here? Decentralized power, Kanak. Sounds good to me. Is any of New Zealand still left? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> uh, no, maybe not. But we also have Micronesia, decentralized power. Hawaii is actually unrecognized, so we'd have to fight them. But I think you get the idea. There'll be some stuff for us to do. Let's start by right-clicking and colonizing the state of Celebs. Sure. Boom. I, I want you. 1,000 days. <laughs> Great. And we need another technology if we want to start getting Papua. Interesting. Okay. Let me have a look and see if we can grab this. Okay. So that will give us an extra level on our colonial affairs institution. And it's 29 months away. I mean, I'm already researching something else that I'm fairly keen on at the moment. But we're just going to jump through and grab it. It's a level two, so we don't get penalized too much, even though there are technologies kind of before it. Uh, let's jump through and give it a go. I know we're researching other things, but this is, to be fair, a bit of a race, right? The other thing, of course, that we can do to speed up our race is increase this investment. I'm already working on that. We'll just keep pumping that through and begin our colonization, baby, an independent Korea now begins colonizing Oceania. Eh, well, I mean, Indonesia too. Look at us go. Questionable practices events come up. Okay. Released patients from an asylum have steadily denounced the practices involved in their supposed medical treatments, mistreatment of sick, withholding their letters, bad punishments. Okay. So what we could do is smack down our religious group minus two approval from them. We could take on some extra expenses, which would put us in the red, but it would up standard of living in one of our territories. Or we could give them approval and take a bureaucratic hit. Uh, we'll just lose some approval from them. I don't want to lose money and <laughs> everything else is fine. Okay. Oh my goodness. Look at this, everybody. Korean celebrities. <laughs> We're doing it. So it'll take 983 days to move across the rest of this. Yes, there is quite a penalty, but we've started. We've started our colonial spread into this malaria infested. There's only 36,000 populations here, but it will be worth it. Some reasonable resources potentially in future as well. We're going to need to start industrializing some more, of course, not just with things like railroads, but 
with things like railroads. Uh, I'm going to start by improving our coal production. In fact, we're really going to smash it out. We're going to get like six coal mines online or seven. Uh, and for the time being, we'll import a little bit of British coal just to keep the economy afloat. Sulfur, we know, our number one issue. However, now we have access to the French market thanks to our extra strategic interests and the fact that we're now colonizing Korean Indonesia, uh, we will be bumping into new powers, new trade routes, and raising concerns. The armed forces are concerned about <laughs> government decisions favoring the industrialists who, need I not remind, are literally in government. Now that the politics of our nation has changed a little bit over time, I think we have a potentially a better chance at reforming our economic system laws. We also might want to look at removing religion from the state that would unlock uh, other education systems, for example. However, I think for the time being, uh, let's give it another go at trying to reform the economic system. I notice that interventionalism could be fine. Agrarianism could be fine. Here we run the risk of radicalizing a few groups, but the other two don't. So let's try again one more time. <laughs> one more time for the people in the back. Let's try with agrarianism. Yes, the success rate is still low and the debate chance is very high, but I think this is worthwhile for us to push through. We have higher legitimacy this time as well. So we'll get a go roughly once a year. <laughs> we'll cross our fingers and hope for the best as we continue to expand down here in Indonesia. Yes! <laughs> Very good. Very good. We might get a small construction sector slowly online here. Although actually, while it's still expanding, it's probably too soon. There aren't really enough people there or any new resources to warrant me uh, immediately beelining down that way. So I think we'll continue to probably build up this area instead, maybe queue up some extra universities down the line. Uh, I think our first expansion on those went really well. So we'll rack stack up a few more uh, and also maybe look to fill in, like I was saying earlier, some of these more basic ones, because we still have a lot of people working the land, subsistence farming. Uh, we'll continue also to expand our barracks. I might add five more while I remember, speaking of realism, it might pay to be a little bit more realistic here and try and add a bit of extra strength to our military as well. And with our new strategic interests online, I can't help but notice that as I move over this massive chain of islands, Micronesia, I have the option to colonize. And so you know what? I think we're going to do just that. Look at all of these options. What? <laughs> I mean, I guess. Let's start colonizing. We're going to colonize New Zealand. We're going to start colonizing Australia. We're going to start colonizing Micronesia. We're going to start colonizing everywhere. And as my massive colonization spree starts to kick off, uh, the king wants to intervene in our agrarianism reform. The king's taken a personal interest in ongoing debate and have resolved to use his royal prerogative to ensure that the law passes. Plus 20% chance, much to the bane of the armed forces and the intelligentsia. Let's do it. That's going to be a great reform for us to ditch our traditional economy as, hey, look. I start to colonize uh, everywhere. <laughs> what? So there's this little bit of Australia here that New South Wales haven't colonized yet. Noongar. And so I was like, oh, Noongar. I'll take some of that. Then over in New Zealand, we have the Korean North Island. We've taken literally the capital, Wellington. Uh, and it looks like we're starting to take some of the South Island as well. Neat. Uh, over here, we have Korean Kanak. Looking good. Uh, moving our way up. Yet Micronesia slowly falling into place as well. Can't quite take Papua yet, but once we get that technology, we'll be able to. <laughs> what is the stupidity? I mean, I love it. Don't get me wrong. Um, wow. Look, now that we're moving into even more areas, we can declare more interests. And you know what that means. <laughs> more colonization 
Wait, hold on. Hold on. Guys. Um, I mean... <laughs> we might as well. <laughs> okay, I am declaring a Korean interest in Southern Africa. Yeah. That is really funny. What do we need? We need our interest, and then we need that technology. Okay, so we are researching that technology. We're building a few, although maybe not as many as we possibly could, extra universities. We might queue up a few more. <laughs> we should get schools online through our laws once we reform the economy. And we might even be able to push this. Oh, yes, there's the technology. Let's immediately upgrade this to level three investment that will, again, add more growth generation to our colonies. We have loads of bureaucracy, so that's not a problem. That technology's done. I might bounce back and grab egalitarianism because I do still want to get those unlocks. And if this strategic interest comes online, yep, bam. It's only going to take 14,000 days. We've got a lot of colonies, but let's also now start colonizing Western New Guinea as well. Now, of course, what I could do is ditch some of these that I'm not so interested in. There's the railway unlocked as well and try and focus our efforts on one or two few that we care about. But for the time being, we have a couple of little enclaves in all of these territories. I'm going to let them tick away as they are for now. We have a trade agreement proposal. This could potentially wreck our economy. It did. I'm going to just immediately throw that trade agreement out the window. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, man. Okay, and so now that we have an Indonesian HQ, of course... Here in Indonesian Korea, we're, you know, potentially being pulled into diplomatic conflicts and all sorts of madness down here. Uh, for the time being, we'll completely ignore that uh, as we focus a little bit more on our domestic politics, which could also change now as Korea looks to reach out and grab little meme colonies all over the damn world. Uh, and nope, it hasn't, though. The Liberal Party surging up in momentum. People don't want to bar of the conservatives now. One tenth the size of the liberals. That is actually quite the shift in our internal politics. Were we able to pass economic reform? No. Even with the king helping us out. Nothing. There's a big chance for it to be debated and not a lot else. Uh, the election is finished. The liberals romped home to power once more. The Conservative Party in power with them at the moment as they ditched all of their friends. Absolute madness. Uh, if we boot them out, we will lose legitimacy and they will then form up a massive coalition uh, on the other side of the house. It's probably not the end of the world. It's kind of the way it has always been. We could look to keep that group separated if we want to as well by pulling one part of it over with us. Unfortunately, the game isn't going to let me do it unless I bring every single one of them. We would have a really legit government if we put everybody into power, wouldn't we? I wonder what that would do for us, actually. We could experiment with it. Just for fun. To see what would happen. Let's do it. We are a 100% legitimate government. And that will speed up the time that this takes. So inadvertently, by adding the Conservatives into power, we should actually be able to speed this up considerably, right? Take a look at how quickly this will move through. Now, has the success chance increased? No, and it will probably actually decrease <laughs> now that we're sharing power with them. However, we should be able to re-roll enough times that we'll either get lucky and push it through or debate it and increase our chances. In this case, we debated it and increased, and we're going back at it again in half a year, thanks to our massive legitimacy. Eh, doesn't even feel that cheesy. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Uh, our market access is terrible across the colonies. Our isolated regions, of course, across the colonies. Uh, there's a pact at risk of breaking. That's our trade agreement with 
the Great Qing. We actually want that to break. We've purposely thrown out their diplomats to break that, so that's fine. Uh, and there are a lot of tensions between us and every single state that we're colonizing, basically. Uh, and you know that stands to reason, because look at this, look at this. <laughs> Everybody's grabbing a piece. <laughs> Oh, uh, we should probably stop some of our other colonies, though, to speed this one up, in fairness. Uh, might need to do some reprioritization, but I think I will leave that prioritization until next time. Thank you very much for joining me today in what has been a period of big change and, actually, pretty decent colonial expansion. Uh, this territory, however, at the moment, is completely devastated, so we might also make building them a port for some market access or something a priority moving forward thank you very much for joining me today everybody i super appreciate your support on this series and i will be back with more very soon take care and i'll see you next time bye bye